Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett. On this channel, we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video, we're going to be covering Charles Law. And we're going to learn the variables that are associated with it and how to solve problems with it. Let's get started. In previous videos, we talked about Boyle's Law. And if you remember, Boyle's Law is looking at the relationship with, between pressure and volume. Now, in this video, we're going to be learning about Charles Law. So again, Charles Law is now a, a different simple gas law, but it's looking at the relationship between volume and temperature. All right, so a great way to remember what variables are involved in this one, another mnemonic device for you, is that Charles Barkley, who we know is a basketball player, okay, Charles Barkley is very tall. So very for volume, tall, T for temperature, okay? Um, and so when we're looking at Charles Law problems, we are assuming that the, con the pressure and the amount of gas or the number of moles is being held constant. So when we look at this, as we increase the temperature, what we're going to see is an increase in our volume as well. And so that means that there's a direct relationship between these two variables. So unlike what we saw with the uh, pressure volume, pressure versus volume equation, we're actually going to end up with a nice linear line here, okay? Now, important to remember when you're doing Charles Law problems is that the temperature must be in Kelvin. And so back in chapter one, we learned how to actually calculate your Kelvin num uh, number. And so you're just going to simply add that 273 or 273.15 if your number has decimals in it. Um, and then we'll be able to solve for the appropriate volume or relationship that we're looking at. So your equation that you want to remember for uh, Charles Law is that V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Now, the cool thing with Charles Law is that when you're looking at different types of gases, regardless of the gas that we're dealing with or regardless of the molecule that we're dealing with, this linear relationship exists, okay? And so you see that when we're looking at different um, amounts of, of oxygen at different um, pressures, that there's this linear relationship that is existing um, between the volume and the temperature. Now, this graph is showing you the temperature in Celsius. And this is going to help us understand why we're converting to that Kelvin temperature. If we were to extrapolate back to where these lines would put us, they all converge at this negative 273.15 value. And so that value represents what we know as absolute zero. So we're converting to Kelvin because we want to avoid putting negative numbers into these relationships, these, these um, volume or these um, calculations that we're going to be doing here. So if we look at a molecular view of this um, concept, again, think about how much energy things have. So if we put this uh, container with the gas molecules in it into hot water, those gases are going to get that energy from that hot temperature and they're going to start moving a lot faster. As they start moving faster, they're going to be able to expand even more and take up more space within that container. For um, if you put that same, uh, in this example, a balloon into cold water, well, now that's going to slow down the gas molecules. And so as they slow down, the actual size of the, of the, of the balloon or container is going to actually decrease. So again, direct relationship between the two. As volume increases, the temperature would increase as, uh, and vice versa. Okay. And so simply put, as these gases are heated, get more temperature added to them, as it goes up, the gas particles start moving even faster. There's going to be greater number of collisions that are occurring, and that's going to cause that expansion of this volume container that you're, you're, you're capturing these things in. Um, the only way for the pressure to remain constant is for the gas to occupy larger volume so that the collisions become less frequent and occur over a larger area. And so again, in these Charles Law um, problems, we're assuming that our pressure is being held constant. So this is just a really good, nice picture so you can see some of this in action. Uh, with our hot air balloons, we have that really hot fire that's actually allowing those um, particles to expand and take up that entire space of the balloon. Um, or similarly, we could take a, a balloon and put it into um, liquid nitrogen, which is really, really cold, and you could see a balloon start to collapse because of those colder temperatures. All right, so let us try a problem. And so the problem here says the temperature inside a balloon is raised from 25 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. If the volume of cold air was 10 liters, what is the volume of hot air? 
So we want to make sure we can distinguish between what each of these variables represent. So we have 25.0 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. So if we look at this, this it went from this 25 to 250. So this would be our T1 versus our T2. And if the volume of the cold air was 10 liters, well, that means that this is the volume one because our cold temperature was the, the first condition. What is the volume of the hot air? So that means we're solving for V2. Remember our equation here that we're gonna be using is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now, before you plug in, remember that we have to actually take into account that we have to change those temperature units from Celsius to Kevin. So Kelvin, you have to do that before you plug in to the equation. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So T1 would be 25 degrees Celsius plus our 273.15. We plug that into our calculator. We got 25 plus 273. 0.15, and that gives us 298.15. Again, with sig figs, that would end up being rounded off to 298.2. Um, and for T2, we would have 250 plus 273.15. So 250 plus 273.15, and that'll get us 523.15, or we can round that up to 523.2 Kelvin for both of those. And then we're ready to plug in. Again, I, sim I really do suggest that you um, rearrange your equation first before you try to plug in. I know for me, it just helps make it a lot easier. So for solving for V2, V2 would end up equaling, we're gonna bring T2 up to the other side. So V1 times T2 divided by, T1. And then we're going to go ahead and plug in. So our V1 is 10 liters. Our T2 is 523.2 Kelvin. And our T1 is 298.2 Kelvin. Okay. And you'll see that our Kelvin units cancel. So we have 10 times 523.2 divided by 298. 8.2 and that's going to give us about 17.5 and the units here would be liters. Okay. Now again that should make sense you do that conceptual check. Our temperature increased so you should expect that your volume should also increase and we see that indeed it did. I hope this video helped you understand all about Charles Law and how to do the calculations associated with it. Make sure you guys come back to learn about our other gas laws and also like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what other kind of content you would like to see. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in future videos. Bye-bye.